Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Today, what I'm going to do is review the F4424 Max by TerraMaster. I'm going to give it a full review in this video. And it's been a while since I reviewed a NAS unit on my channel, but that changes today because TerraMaster sent me a really great unit for review, the F4424 Max. And its specs are really impressive. This 4-bay NAS features a Core i5 CPU with 10 cores and 12 threads, and it also has two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. And that makes it great for both small businesses and home lab use. And you're going to learn all about it in today's video. So what I'll do, like I said, is give you a full review of the F4424 Max, and I'll help you decide whether or not this is the right NAS unit for you. I'll give you all of my thoughts, and I'll also have time codes in the description, so that way you can get right to the section that most interests you. Now, one more thing before we get started. Like I said, TerraMaster did send this in for review. However, all the thoughts in this video, as always, are completely my own. TerraMaster was not allowed to review this content before you guys had a chance to see it first. Anyway, I'm really excited to dive in, so let's do that right now. First, let's see what's inside the box. Something I noticed right away is that TerraMaster must have spent a decent amount of time with the attention to detail in regard to the packaging. I've heard other people say that TerraMaster used to have very generic packaging, but I wouldn't know since this is the very first time I've ever looked at one of their devices. But it's definitely the case that the packaging is very professional. Inside the box, you have all the usual stuff, the NAS unit itself, a power cable, a network cable, and so on. What's not included in the box are any hard disks, though, so you'll need to add your own. When we get to the pricing section later in the video, you'll also need to factor in the cost of drives if you don't have any on hand. Anyway, let's take a look at the build and assembly process. Honestly, there's really not all that much to it. There's four drive bays, each one including a tray that you'll use to attach hard drives. It's a toolless design. You basically disconnect the rails from the tray, attach the hard drive, and then reattach the rails to secure the hard drive. The entire process of adding drives to this unit takes about five minutes, and then you're good to go. Once all that's done, all you have to do is connect the included AC adapter and network cable to your router and switch, turn it on, and then you should see the NAS unit show up in your DCP list. Once you visit the IP address that gets assigned to the device, you can begin configuring it. The initial setup process is fairly straightforward, but it can take a while. The first run initialization takes about 10 minutes, which isn't too bad since you only have to do that once. At this stage, TOS, the TerraMaster operating system, gets installed, and then after that, it'll prompt you to initialize any hard disks you may have added. Oddly enough, initializing the disks took a very, very, very long time to complete. The odd thing about this is that I haven't even copied over my first file to this unit yet, so I was curious why it took so long to initialize disks that I'm not even using. But then again, you only have to do that once, and then you're good to go. But I wanted to mention this because if you do buy this unit for yourself, you'll need to be a bit patient when you set it up. Continuing, let's take a look at the build quality. I consider the build quality of the F4424 Max to be good, but not necessarily great. Basically, it's effective and fairly easy to work with, but it's not going to blow you away. The device feels firm and solid, but at the same time, it's mostly plastic and isn't going to win any design awards. But considering that most people that buy NAS units will just keep them on a shelf and pay more attention to the software, I guess that's not really a big deal. When it comes to ports, there's two USB Type-A ports, a single USB-C port, all of which supports up to 10 gigabits per second, along with two gigabit Ethernet ports and even an HDMI port. Having two 10 gig ports makes this very attractive for both small businesses and home lab, as quite a few NAS units are limited to 2.5 gigabits per second. Having two gigabit ports gives you additional options for integrating it into your network, although other bottlenecks such as available PCIe lanes means that depending on your use case, you may or may not see all the full benefit of the bandwidth, but it'll still perform faster than competing devices with 2.5 gig ports, so it still adds value. The presence of an HDMI port is fairly interesting, though. It basically means you can run a Linux distribution or even Windows on this device and use it as a desktop PC. So having all the ports that this unit has definitely increases potential use cases, and you can even go as far as to install TrueNAS, Proxmox, or some other home lab app just as you would on a PC, because essentially this is a desktop PC. 
Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. What really annoys me though is that TerraMaster has a disclaimer on their website that using another operating system is not supported and invalidates your warranty. It makes no sense to me why they'd give you all these ports and then scold you if you decide to use them too much. Worse, it's against the law for a company to void your warranty if you decide to use another operating system, and it also reflects very poorly on TerraMaster that they even included this on their website at all. Especially with my audience, right to repair is very important, so I think they need to consider their audience when they're creating devices like this. We definitely love to tinker and try new things, and there's nothing wrong with that. Ranting aside though, the build quality overall is decent with additional ports that increase its functionality. Continuing, let's talk about the out-of-box experience and the overall setup process. I'll continue from where I left off earlier when I showed its unboxing. Installing drives is a breeze on this unit. There's four drive bays, and all you have to do is slide them out, remove the rails, and then replace them after you attach the drive. The rails contain posts for screw holes and snap back into place to secure the drives. One thing to note is that the drives don't have any locks, which I would have preferred to ensure that the drives don't get moved or accidentally removed. The only thing that keeps the drives from sliding out of the bays is a single latch on the front, which is simply a tilt mechanism that's easy to move. Perhaps a bit too easy. Obviously, this is probably a small nitpick, but it's still worth mentioning. There's also two M.2 NVMe slots as well that you can use for additional storage options, such as caching. These drives aren't as easy to remove, and you have to partially disassemble the unit to access these slots. It's a bit of a contrast, to say the least, with the front drive bays being a little too easy to open, and the M.2 slots being unnecessarily difficult. Once you've installed the drives, powered on the unit, and then accessed the web console, you'll go through the setup process. It does take a while, especially if you install large hard drives, It'll guide you through the process every step of the way and even initialize your drives for you. Like I mentioned earlier, this part could take a bit of time to complete, so you'll definitely want to be patient while setting it up. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the operating system that ships with this device, TOS 6. TOS, or TerraMaster OS, is like an actual operating system inside your browser, complete with an applications menu. It even lets you access multiple apps at the same time via a full windowing system. I think this is a really nice touch, and TOS seems to be very intuitive and easy to navigate. I suppose the only downside for the most part is that while TOS is pretty good, it's not going to have the feature set of something like TrueNAS. And considering how easy TrueNAS is to install, it's kind of a bit hard to resist. But when you take that out of the equation, TOS itself is actually pretty good. It has all the basic features covered, including giving you the ability to run containers or even full virtual machines. The navigation makes sense, and at no point did I have any trouble finding anything that I was looking for. In fact, even if you are a fan of more advanced solutions like TrueNAS, you might find that TOS meets all of your needs. If so, it might just make sense to stick with TOS unless it's missing a feature that you can't live without. But even if it is, there's built-in support to install Portainer, so between TOS and the apps that you can install, all your bases are probably covered. For example, when you set up a storage volume, you'll be able to choose the type of RAID array you'd like to create, with T-RAID being the default, and it's a TerraMaster-specific type of disk array that enables you to add disks of varying sizes, which gives you even more flexibility. However, if you'd like to use a standard RAID option, those are available as well. So overall, what do I think of the TerraMaster F4 424 Max? Overall, I really do like this unit a lot. It has two 10 gig NICs. USB, HDMI, basically all the ports you would probably ever need. The built-in operating system, TOS, is very capable and gives you quite a bit of flexibility. Creating shares, installing apps, spinning up containers, there's quite a bit you could do with it. As far as whether or not I'd recommend it, I definitely would, but the thing is, there's a hefty price tag attached. The F4 424 Max comes in at nearly 900 US dollars, and that's without any hard drives at all. 
Once you start adding drives, then approaching or exceeding $1,500 would not be a stretch. I suppose what it comes down to is whether or not you should buy a packaged unit like this one or build your own. The trade-off is with building a unit yourself, it's a bit more involved compared to buying something that has already been prepared for this purpose. At that point, you decide for yourself what's more important between money and your time. Or perhaps you're not interested in building anything at all, in which case something like this might be your only option. But getting back to the original question in this section, whether or not you should buy this particular unit, my recommendation is to consider all of your options. At $900, this unit is very expensive. That wouldn't be a problem if the F4424 Max stood out in some way. It's a great unit, and it does everything it should do, and has all the ports you might find useful, but it doesn't do much of anything else. But once you do consider all of your options, and if you do land on this device, I think you're going to love it. It's going to perform very well for you. And like I said, I don't think there's any downsides here. It's just that it doesn't really stand out much against the competition. You could consider things like Synology, for example, as an alternative, something else to consider. But again, if you land on this device, I do think you're going to enjoy it. I do recommend it, but I do recommend that you also consider all of your options as well, just in case one of the other solutions might check your boxes better than this one does. Anyway, I really appreciate TerraMaster sending this in for review. I really appreciate it. And let me know in the description down below what you thought of this device, this review, or just ask a Linux question. Anyway, I have some awesome videos coming very soon, and I'll see you in the next video.